welcome to worship, Grace Fellowship. Let's stand together as we prepare our hearts and sing. Grace, you have by your merciful us by grace name. into a relationship with you into which we enter into freedom, a freedom which, which we have never known before, a freedom free of strings and tricks. Father, you are holy, you are light, there's no darkness in you. Father, help us to come into the light. Help us to allow your light to dispel any darkness in us. 
Father, we've all come from different places today to join in your house. And so, Father, as we stand in your presence, we are grateful that we can do so. And so, Father, with open hearts, with open minds, we sing of your greatness, we sing of your love so that we might remind our soul that we are known, cared about, loved by an infinitely holy God who longs to have relationship with us. Help us to enter into real relationship with you, not just right now for an hour, Lord, but for the rest of our lives. She would become so real to us like the very breath that we take. Father, without you, we wouldn't be able to. You're so much greater than we give you credit for, God. We make you small. Forgive us when we do that. We're your people, and we love you. We honor you. We worship you today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Friends, in the light of that truth, let's turn to someone next to you and greet them in the Lord's name. Don't let anyone be a stranger today. Don't let anyone be a stranger today. Let's continue in worship. Water, you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. He is awesome. Let's sing it again. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. It's none like you. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever 
never stop us. And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, let's sing it one more time, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. That's our God, y'all.
wonderful cross where you bore our sin you bore our shame and you buried it and you rose victorious over it and we stand in your victory thank you for giving us the freedom to win in you Jesus we choose you Lord in Jesus name Amen please be seated well, friends, we have made it. Well, friends, we have made it. Well, friends, we have made it. It is a new day, and I. It is a new day, and I. Can you get me to my announcements, Jolene? Would that be okay? Can you get me to my announcements, Jolene? That's okay. Would that be okay? That's okay. It is November, which it means that I bet you that somebody had a birthday this month, and you might have one. There we go. One, two, three, four. There we go. One, two, three, four. There we go. One, two, three, four. Four birthdays in November. I wonder how many online four we have. It's your birthday. You're watching online. Tell us it's your birthday. Tell us it's your birthday. We're going to sing to you as well. It's our custom here to sing happy birthday. And since there are so many of us, we add God bless you to the name. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Wonderful. May God bless you richly this year as you know him more, as you seek to encounter him in his word. Uh, may you be blessed as you find him. Um, what about our newlyweds? Anybody married in November in this church? Anybody with us today that was married in November? No? One. Hey. Oh, man, that was a quick, wasn't it? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, happy anniversary. God bless you. May you be uh, filled with his love for one another. And, um, and, and that is absolutely wonderful. All right. It's also wonderful today in November. We have some new members joining us today. So, Nelsons, will you come forward? Will you come forward? For the past few weeks, we have been in conversation, weeks, and they have, have been gotten to know all about us. They, they even took home our bylaws and our book of doctrine. We shared some wonderful conversation, some important doctrinal questions. questions. And so, my question to questions. you all, like I love so to ask all of our members, is do you, like you believe all of our that the Lord Jesus is the Son of God, and He came and died and rose again for your justification and forgiveness? You do. Good. Do you believe that the Bible in its entirety is inerrant in everything and is the word of God for us to follow? Yes. Wonderful. Well then, friends, it is my pleasure to welcome you in to membership here at Grace Fellowship. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Um, okay. Kiddos. Come on up. Kiddos, come on up. All righty. Do you guys feel like time is flying? Do you guys feel like it's already November, or is it finally November? Finally. Oh, hold on to it, okay? Hold on to that, because it won't always be like that, children, okay? You're going to wake up one day, and you're going to have gray hair. You're going to wonder wake where up it came one day, from. and you're going to have gray hair. All right? I wonder where I mean it, it. From. it happened to me. All right? It's true. I mean it. See, that guy up there, he's not lying. True. See, All that right. guy up there, he's not lying. So I'm so right. glad that we had a bonus in so here. So I'm so I glad needed, that we had a bonus in here because I need it. Does that sound like a lot of money to you guys? Does that sound like a lot of money to you some, guys? What if I go like this? It does? To some, what if I go like this? That sounds like a lot? 
No, some of you that say we got mixed reviews. Okay, I'm going to no, go for some it. Some of you say we got mixed reviews. Oh, okay, I'm going to go for it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's a lot for somebody. That's a, that's a really good way to think about it. It's a lot for somebody, right? But it's not a lot for somebody else. And did you know that Jesus sat in the temple with his disciples one day? Right next to the place where the, the Jews put their offering. And it was in a big old, big old basin. And, and there were these big old, like, trumpet-looking things that came out of it. And people would go and they'd take their money and they'd go like this. And people would go and they'd take their money and they'd go like this. And it would make it sound like there was a lot going in, right? A big brass bowl like when you throw a lot going money in, against right? a metal. It clings really hard, right? Money against and metal. Then, it clings really hard, right? And an old lady walked and then, up. An old and she had two up. little pieces. And she had two of little money. pieces. Yeah, two little tiny pennies. They were, they were called yeah. mites. Two little tiny pennies. In that they day. were called mites. And they were worth that practically day. nothing. And they were worth and practically she had two nothing. Of them. And she put them in. She had two of them. And as she, she left, Jesus said to his and disciples, as she left, Jesus said to I his need disciples, you to see something. The woman I would need you who to just see left something. gave the more woman. than anybody else. Gave more than but anybody else. taking huge gobs of but coins and throwing them in. And Jesus gobs. said that lady gave more than anybody else. That's kind of confusing, isn't it? Because not really, right? Like I saw somebody put in fifty dollars and she put in two pennies. And she put in two pennies. No, maybe. Maybe, maybe in their heart, no, maybe their maybe, heart wasn't right. Maybe, maybe in their heart, maybe their heart okay. wasn't right. Okay. She couldn't afford to give any more. That's exactly she couldn't right. Couldn't afford Lucas. to give any more. That's, That's all exactly she had, right. He told Lucas. them. That's all Jesus she said. Had, she she told gave them. out of Jesus her she poverty. Out of her and she gave poverty. everything. And she gave everything. And Yes. What does that mean to give everything you have? Yes. What does that mean well, to give everything? Let's look at it this way. Jesus, like we just well, saying. Let's look at it this way. Jesus, Jesus is love. Like so amazing. Jesus is love, and it's so, so divine amazing. that it demands and so our divine. soul. And our life and our all. We want to give all to Jesus because he gave his all for us. And that woman was honoring God by giving him all that she had. Him. And, and I'm going to help us to understand what and, that's, that and looks I'm like help in a little story. There was a young girl, little girl named Hattie, girl, and she went to a church Hattie, that wasn't big enough for everybody to get in. That wasn't big okay. enough for everybody and to so get in. And so she would be outside, okay. and the and pastor so would be came outside and found Hattie and brought her into the Sunday school lesson. And she said, I really hope and pray that your building is big enough for all of us. Your to come in is big enough for all of us. And to come then into. something sad happened. Just and a couple years later, little Hattie passed happened. away. Just a couple and the years later, little Hattie was done by that very pastor that sat on his knee. Or he, she sat on his knee and told that story. And his mom, her mom came up to him after the funeral and gave him a little coin purse. And there was 57 little cents inside that coin purse. And she told him. That and Hattie had been saving him all of her pennies, pennies had been so that you could build a bigger church so, so that the children could all come in. Church that so pastor went home to his church and told that pastor the church that story. And within no time at all, it's okay. Within no time at all, time at all, it's a church. Within no time at all, raised enough money to build a bigger church. All because little money to build a bigger church. All because little Isn't it amazing that fifty-seven cents in God's economy can become enough to build an entire building? Can become enough to build an entire. Isn't that crazy? Do you guys want to be a part of that crazy mission? Do you guys know that we get pocket change like this from people and we're able to help friends in our community and help by buying them things that they need or buying for bills that they couldn't because we were generous with just a few coins? Isn't that amazing? You guys want to be a part of that? Isn't that amazing? All right. Well, let's let's uh, let's pray and then have All right. submission well, let's, time. Let's, Heavenly uh, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to watch Heavenly you do Father, amazing you things with the money that we entrust you with. You just like little Hattie entrusted 57 cents to you, like to you and Hattie made it into a, a whole new church. To you and you Lord, we, we, a, we think about that church. woman who gave all that she had because she loved you so. She wanted you to have all that she had. Help us to live that way. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Help us to live that way. All right, kids, let's do some mission work. Take your buckets right, and kids. friends, let's if you have pocket work. change, we just your put some change in there. as we receive the offering. We'll let stand as we receive the offering. Praise God from whom praise God from got a few okay. little announcements before well, I get into little the scripture I get real into quick. The scripture um, real quick. Okay. Um, um, just in case you were wondering okay. um, and, and weren't sure where we have our main uh, offering, that's in the back window. Uh, we have our main offering, that's gathering space in the back under the TV. And as we roll into November, and, um, um, I want to remind us our youth group is still meeting at the Kyle's tonight. And, um, and then we're probably going to come back to the church as the weather gets starting kind of gross outside. I don't want to trash their home. So I'll have to talk a little more with the Kyles about future plans. But please, if you do have youth, ages 10 and up, tonight at 430 out at 25028 Lang Road, it's a wonderful opportunity to spend time with kids your age and get time in the Word and time um, in Christian fellowship. Adult Sunday School happens at 9 o'clock here in the Fellowship Hall. Um, so if you're new with us and you didn't know that we make that available, we do have an Adult Sunday School class downstairs um, from 9 to 9.45. Judson leads that for us. He reads the scripture uh, during the service. So if uh, you get a name to the face, he's the Sunday School teacher downstairs. Um, Tuesday night Bible study returns November 12th downstairs in the Fellowship Hall um, as 
we are moving into festive times. Um, I have to start dividing myself up and passing things off. And so I have passed off Bible study to Todd Torres. And he is going to uh, be leading that downstairs um, in the fellowship hall on Tuesday nights at 6.30. So mark your calendars. Come back uh, on the 12th, and that's probably going to have some food because there were some rumblings around that, and there's a kitchen down there and bowls and soups. So if you want to bring food to that, that's cool. All right? Okay. Um, November 5th, I'll have the church open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, so that we can all, um, as you feel led, come, and the sanctuary will be open for a time of reflection and uh, intercession with the Lord over our country and uh, over um, the, uh, the vote of the day. Um, Friendsgiving is our annual tradition, and because we are growing, a generous donor has uh, rented out the event barn on South 65, and so we will have Friendsgiving <laughs> with lots of elbow room. And, and plenty of room to get in and help and all of that good stuff. So we'll have it the entire day. Um, and my, uh, my, th- my Friendsgiving team will have more information for how you can all help. We have a few more weeks. There is a sign-up sheet in the back for you to sign up to bring food. And, uh, and, so, and as we get closer, um, we will have more on the how you can help if you want to do more than just bring food. November 20th, mark your calendars. Christmas choir, I am looking for uh, folks who will be available on Christmas Eve to sing at both services. We are doing two this year to accommodate for all of our guests. Two this year and, to um, and so I'm for looking for guests. them. And that will um, be on Tuesday, so November 12th at 6.30 up here in the Fellowship November Hall. We will have a smaller yet more intimate group for the music and, and that is wonderful. Group for so the music uh, and, and that remember, is wonderful. please be available for both services on Christmas. That is the, the linchpin to singing in the choir this year. Um, We also are um, putting it out there that we are uh, doing our reverse advent calendar, and and that's an opportunity for you to, instead of open a box and pull out a piece of chocolate, every day you get to think about somebody else, and you're going to build a food box, a meal box, for a less fortunate family for the Christmas season, so they can actually have a Christmas meal. And, um, And so, the, there are sheets in the back, and we're starting early so we don't overwhelm anyone. And, um, and, and each day there is a, uh, a different food item to uh, fill in your box as you, uh, as you lovingly prepare a box for someone in need for this Christmas season. And so there are forms in the back for that. Um, Christmas caroling. Um, is, is coming up. I, I, I know that it's not quite December yet. We just got into November, but I wanted to let you know that this is a thing that we love to do, and everyone is welcome. It doesn't matter if you're a good singer or not. If you want to sing Christmas carols and wander around downtown Coal Camp and hang out, let's do it. We have a good time. We pick three or four of the ones that we like, and we just do those everywhere. So you get really good at two or three Christmas carols. Don't worry. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a solo opportunity. It's all good. And, and Hanging of the Greens is this month, so please get that on your calendar. There is going to be food provided for us. Uh, I know that Courtney said she's going to be starting to make in some chili for that dinner, so um, we're going to have chili for that. And if you want to bring food on that day, you can. That's November 24th. All of these are in your calendars. Um, there are calendars in the back. I just wanted to put the month out in front of you so that you could see what was going on. Um, I've mentioned the Christmas Eve service, so uh, please be thinking about this. This is going to be a new thing for us. We're going to need a lot of help, lots of hands. So if you can serve at one and then attend the other or serve at both. Whatever you feel the Lord calling you to do, some of us can serve at both. Some of us can't serve at either one. But please pray about it and pray for the helpers because we're going to need them. We're going to need about 18 per service, okay? So let's think about that and and be praying about that. You've got a month and a half to think about it, okay? And then I'm going to start asking people. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 
So plug into the church. We've got lots to do. Find out where you can serve. There's a connection card in the pew in front of you. Um, you can fill that out. Show us where you, where you like to serve. If you love the Lord, if you love to play an instrument, if you sing, if you are a teacher, if you're techie, if you have a heart for the lonely, come and talk with me because I can use you. We're getting bigger and I need more help. So if this fits you, if you fall into any of these categories, please make some time and, and talk with me. My office door is always open. Um, you can always call me. Um, and so just let's, uh, let's plug in and, and join together. A great way to join together is, is helping in the children's ministry. We need children's teachers, y'all. We've got an amazing director, and she needs your help. So uh, please be praying about joining to, uh, to teach um, several times uh, a month if you can, or even one weekend a month would be wonderful. So please uh, think about that. Um, our, and finally, our production team, um, our friends in the sound booth, um, we, we need more help. We need to get more so that they can uh, rotate on and off and everyone get a chance to enjoy service and not have to work. If you uh, don't do social media, um, then you're going to miss a lot of our announcements. Follow us on Facebook if you are, and that'll help you to stay abreast of what we have going on. Whew. Okay, now I'm going to give you a break from my voice, and I'm going to turn it over to Judson, and we're going to hear some scripture. So my name is Judson. I teach the Sunday school class. It starts at 9 o'clock, and we're going to be starting very soon a study in the Gospel of John. Nice. So if you'd like to jump into that at the very beginning, we'd love to see you. So the scripture reference today is taken from uh, the book of Romans, and this is chapter 8, starting at verse 1 through verse 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who that are in the flesh cannot please God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, friends. Well, I gave to you Paul's understanding of the necessity for you and I to become spiritual people. The biggest thrust of his message is that you can't please God unless you are spiritually alive. And Jesus has been speaking to the churches. And he finds a church that is indeed dead. Which is a huge problem because churches are supposed to be the center of Christian life. It is supposed to be the place where people come to receive something of the Lord that they will not find anywhere else. And that is the life and peace that he promises his children. Now, for the past month, we have listened to Jesus 
and he has called himself by different names. He called himself the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks amongst the seven golden lampstands. He's called himself the dead and, or excuse me, the first and the last who was dead and came to life. And so what I think is important for us today is as we get ready to finish up these last two churches, we need to hear who it is that is speaking to the church. In, in my prayer this morning, I said, forgive us when we make you small. We can make God kind of small sometimes. There's one movie that I won't name, but they make a big point of, of thinking about Jesus as a little baby lying in a manger. And some of us will laugh because we know exactly what I'm talking about. But we want to think of Jesus as safe and peaceful. Not going to get all up in your business. He's not going to mind you any harm either because he's just a little baby. But John tells us a very different story of who Jesus is and who is this Jesus who speaks to him. And so if you turn to Revelation chapter 1, verse 12, he says, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and he girded about his and girded about his chest with a golden band his head and hair were white like wool his as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire his feet were like fine brass as if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters the sound he had in waters. his right hand Seven he had stars in his right hand. Out of his mouth went a sharp stars. two-edged sword. Out of and his, his mouth countenance was like the sun sword. shining, and, and his, his countenance strength. was like the sun shining. And when I saw him, strength. I fell at and his when I feet as dead. This is the Jesus that awaits us, friends. The glorified Jesus. His voice is like the sound of rushing waters. We get the sound of power. Jesus is powerful. We see that his eyes are like burning flames. Pure. They see through the heart of everything. Nothing gets past his gaze. We see him arrayed in his priestly garment. In his mouth, the truth that he speaks divides flesh from marrow and bone from spirit. It leaves nothing undone. And he stands in the midst of him. And my favorite part about this is Jesus' reassurance. Although glorified and terrifying in his appearance to a mere mortal man, he speaks very familiar words to John. Do not be afraid. Don't you love that God does that to his people whenever he interacts with them? Today, Jesus is wanting to interact with you. And there might be some things that cause you great fear. And his voice is calling to you right now. If you belong to Jesus, he is saying, do not be afraid. He knows you. You belong to him. You know, I've heard so many people tell me they don't read this book, the book of Revelation, because it's scary and it terrifies them. Friends, if this book terrifies you, then I strongly suggest that you speak to me and really start getting to know Jesus because this book should be full of reassurance for us. In fact, we're told that we're blessed if we read it. There's a blessing for the reader here. Terrible things are going to happen on the earth. 
And, and one day I really hope to, to go through all of it with you. I'm going to have to take a master's course on Revelation before I do that with you. Okay, I'll have to be honest, okay? But this book is a book of reassurance for the believer. We get to put our trust in the fact that Jesus said these things are going to happen. And this is what I'm going to do. He told us that he would come and fight against the church if it chose to compromise itself. Friends, we're watching that happen. He does it. He doesn't lie. So we see this glorified Jesus who reminds us that he is the beginning and the end. And he tells this to the church that has found itself in several different states of dissipation. I'll go down in order of our, of our series here. The first church that we looked at was the church in Laodicea. It was lukewarm. It was okay with Jesus when it was okay for them. When it was easy for them or comfortable for them, they were cool with Jesus. But as soon as things got difficult, it wasn't time for Jesus. It was time to do my thing. They were stubborn and arrogant. And they were ignorant of what the Bible truly taught them. What Jesus was really all about. Second, we looked at the church in Pergamos. They were compromising They dwelt among the world, and because they dwelt among the world, they became like the world. You know, I I know of one church in particular, massive church with an amazing mission, and its sole mission was to reach the people that didn't know the Lord. And you fast forward to today, and it has brought in all of those people that it sought to save and became full of just all of those people and somehow a gospel that allowed for that kind of lifestyle and then called it church. They forgot their mission. We go into the world, but we're not to be apart. We're set apart from the world. They did not know the word in the compromising church again, so they believed Anyone that came in. Someone came in and let them know that sexual immorality wasn't that big of a deal. Jesus already died and saved us. We're good. Remember the Nicolaitans that we talked about? They were, they were all about doing whatever you wanted. Free by grace. Grace is free. Like we sang today, but it's not free to do what you want. right? If you're doing whatever you want and it's not what Jesus wants, then you've got a compromised issue in your heart. We will find compromising churches everywhere, from mega churches to hometown churches. Jesus gave us a lot of encouragement because from within those churches that are in trouble, compromising churches, there was a man named Antipas who was faithful and martyred for the truth of the gospel. There are true believers amongst the apostate churches, so we must remember that. That there is always still hope. We're hoping and believing that God is going to continue his work. Third, we found the loveless church. That That was the church in Ephesus. That was the church that Paul doted on. You guys are amazing. I love you guys. Your love for me was fantastic. I talk about you guys. 60 years later. John is writing to them saying, you've fallen away from your love. You do a really good job, but you don't love me anymore. You've forgotten why you're here. Caught up in the doing. It's no longer about the souls. It's just about the numbers. The loveless church is full of hypocrisy. Changed by the love of God, yet unwilling to love like God. He told told them and tells us to repent from that, to turn around, walk away from that kind of behavior, refuse to allow your heart to go to, 
to that place. Remember that Jesus told us, you can't serve two masters. Jesus told us, you're going to love one. Serve two masters. You're going to hate the other. You're going to love one. And remember, when Jesus hate says hate, it means to love less. And remember, when Jesus you're not going to show as much affection to, to the other. You're not going to show as much affection to the other. He said you can't love, or you can't love God he and man. Okay, you can't serve them both. You got to choose who you'll serve. Then he spoke to the persecuted church in Smyrna. They were faithful in the face of death. And walked all the way through it into life everlasting. Promised the Stephanos, the crown of victory. And then the faithful church we talked about last week, Philadelphia. Jesus opens his address to them with a promise of a wide open door. You're coming. You're coming in. No one's getting in the way. You've heard a lot of lies. People are telling you because you're Christian, you're not going to God. The Jews thought they were going. And Jesus told them they are the synagogue of Satan and liars. If you do not have Jesus, you are not going to heaven. Jesus made that clear right here to that church. You know me. You keep my word. The door is open to you. And not only is it open to you, but you'll never leave. He gives one of the greatest compliments. I'm going to make you a pillar in my church. We all know the pillars of our church. The old saints that have been there never miss. We love them so. Miss them when they're not in service. We'll never be missed. Because we'll never miss a service. We'll always be there. And there couldn't be a better place to be. Friends, we've got to get that in our hearts. Heaven is not about something where we get to go fishing and it's beautiful out. Heaven is the presence of God day and night always. Couldn't be anything better because our hearts were made to worship him and we get to do it all the time. Nothing better for us. We couldn't want anything else. And Jesus is saying to the faithful church, the door is open to you. I can't wait till you make it. I can't wait till you come. Hold fast to me. Hold fast to the faith. Friends, we see a lot of eschatology in the book of Revelation, the end time things. And in verse 10 of chapter 3, he says, Because you've kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. There is our promise. There it is. You're not going to deal with what's coming on the world. I'm going to test the world, but you get out. You get out of the great tribulation that will fall. God will take his faithful church out of the world. And remember, it's not the building. You can't come to a faithful church and hope to go with us. You're going to sit alone on Sunday morning. Or there will be few of us sprinkled out. Hopefully not. But there's lots of wonderful movies. And that's the first thing they do is they show a church with people going in it. Wondering where everybody else is at. Friends, when we read this book of Revelation, these first three chapters, and Jesus speaks to the seven churches, he speaks to all of us. Remember that seven is the number of completion, its entirety. All of these hearts and postures are found in every church. The wheat grows with the tares. Okay? And so we're to hold fast to the truth. He writes to the church in Sardis, the dead church. Okay, and he speaks to the pastor. Okay, remember that, that this message is going to the pastor of the church. And Jesus is telling him, you got dead people in your church. Your church has a name that it's alive, but it is dead. Strengthen. What remains? It's so important for the pastor to strengthen his people. Strengthen them in the word. We don't want to have a feel good on Sunday and leave and not know what Jesus is asking of us. So be watchful and strengthen the things that remain. 
no matter how big or how small the church is, the word must get out. It's the only thing that nourishes our soul, and it's the only thing that's, that sustains the believer on their way to holiness. It's the only way that we're going to make it, you guys. We have to eat. If we're not eating, then we won't be filled. Jesus says a beautiful thing. He says, to the one who overcomes, I will give to him some of the hidden manna. Don't you see that Jesus is the perfect provision? We won't need anything else. And the fact that we get tied into that, we get to experience what it was like to eat manna. That's awesome. That's awesome. And lastly, the church in Thyatira, the corrupt church. Jesus says in verse 23, I search the minds and hearts and I will give to each according to your works. Jesus knows our works. And he will give to us accordingly. Because he is just and he's fair. He's good. Friends, the corrupt church has a lot of issues in it. And there was a really cool Christian in the early first century by the name of Tertullian. And he was talking to a, a, a church member who was a, a smith. And he was carving an idol for some idolater out there. And Tertullian goes to him and he goes, well, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I'm a smith. I've, I'm, I've got to make a living. I've got to live. And uh, this is, is really something. And he must have taken a lot after Nathaniel the disciple in whom there was no guile. Yeah, he just tells people the, the real deal. He says this, and I'm going to tell you how he said it. He says, Vivere ergo abes, which translates, must you live? Well, man, I, I got to make a living. I've got to live, so I'm going to do this work that is for idolatry. It's for the devil, but I got to make a living. Do you have to live? Maybe you should find a new profession, I think is what Tertullian was telling that church man. You got a little something messed up here. Who are you working for? Right? Goes back to what Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. Goes back to what Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. Jesus told them that they were the church that agreed with Jezebel. Jesus told them that they were the church that agreed with Jezebel. That is not a good thing. That is, that, that is feminism is... The American word for the worship of the feminist goddess Isis. We don't. We don't need. We don't need to be doing that as Christians. We don't. We don't need to be getting involved with all of that. God established a beautiful order to things, and we should follow that. It's a beautiful way of living, guys. So remember, faithful people. Remember this, Jesus told us to hold on. Hold on to Him. Don't hold on to what you think or what you've learned. Hold on to Him. Now, if you've learned it in the Lord, please hold on to that. But you know what I mean. We've learned a lot of stuff in this day and age, and most of it's junk. None of it lines up with the Word. When it's too dark... To see sometimes. And you get that feeling that you're not being seen. That God doesn't see you. And he doesn't hear your prayers or your cries. Hold on to him. Hold fast. When it feels like it's too much. One more thing is going to break you. Hold on to him. When things are going really good, thank Him. Remember to thank the giver. When things are really hard, don't grow weary. 
Don't grow weary in well-doing. Because if you endure, you will receive the crown of life that was promised you. He said, hold fast till I come. He is coming. And he said, until I come, do this in remembrance of me. Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed to suffering Friends, on the and night death, that Jesus he took was the bread and he broke it, and, death, and he, he gave it to them. The bread and he broke it, and he said, and he "Take gave it to them and eat, for this said, is my body broken for you. For this is my body for the broken sin of the you. world. Eat this, all of you, and as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me." Likewise, after supper, after he taken the cup, he blessed it. And he gave it to them and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this, all of you. And as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Friends, here we, I will hand you a piece of bread and you can dip it in the cup. If you prefer a gluten-free option, we have gluten-free wafers and some gluten-free uh, juice as well. Um, so as you are ready... Please come as, uh, as the ushers um, welcome you out. Welcome you out.
friends now as we prepare to go. Let us, let us pray together the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let's go singing, friends. Singing, friends. May the blessing of God be upon us all today as we go. Now may, may the, the Lord bless you God and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, beloved.